Good afternoon. I think I'm too tall for the microphone. We'll do it this way. Thank you so much for hanging out today. I know the weather's not been the greatest. We made it to the football game. Uh, we lost and it rained a lot. I'm so sorry that we're starting late, but Prof V thought it might be nice to let the band kids get out of their soaking wet uniforms before they came to play for you today. Uh, I'm Dory Wagner, Dean of the Sweeney Conservatory of Music, and I am very honored to be in that position. It's wonderful to see so many supporters of the band and choir, of the music program at Central Methodist. It's been truly a wonderful, wonderful day. So thank you all. Thank you all for being here with us and helping us celebrate this wonderful building. Thank you for helping us celebrate decades and decades of wonderful music making at Central Methodist University, and we hope that there are decades and decades more in the future. And with your support, uh, we'll keep bringing fine kids into this program, and we'll keep sending wonderful musicians out into the world, and uh, we really appreciate all of your help and your support. I'm going to turn the microphone over to Reverend Dan Atkinson, who will lead us in prayer. It's great to be back. This is my 40th class reunion this year, so what a great time. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's pray together. Father God, you are the creator of life. Sustain us in your love today. We marvel at your regenerative powers. You make all things new with just a word and a breath of inspiration. Thank you, Father, for this place and this time. As new life has sprung forth with a fresh vision for our future, let your spirit fill us in this place today. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Oh, I never got applause for the <laughs> Classic Hall. Uh, I had some courses here. I, a German language class, expository writing, creative writing. It was a high and lofty place for me. We a guy who spent most of his time in the basements of the conservatory and T. Ray Smith Hall, because I was an instrumental music major. Uh, both places, here and uh, the basements, I learned skills for life. And I learned how to sharpen those skills with thanks to people like uh, Helen Baskett and Mary Forder Hayes and uh, Paul Montemuro and Thomas Yancey and many more. I learned I could write poetry and, and it sounded good. I learned I could play or sing a phrase with more expression than I ever thought I could ever do. I came to this campus in 1968 and I met people like our next speaker. And it was probably on the marching band practice field. And we later became fraternity brothers and good friends for over 40 years now. Some things about that we have in common. Both of us were soloists in the Messiah Chorus and Lynn Memorial as instrumental. <laughs> and back then, you couldn't do both. You had to do one or the other. But we were instrumental majors, soloists, in the Messiah Chorus. We later learned that his grandfather married my parents in the Methodist Parsonage in Richmond, Missouri. And we never knew that before, but it just kind of just we discovered that. So we're kind of like blood brothers now. <laughs> and we both were privileged to solo on concert band tour with the concert band. And to this day, I cannot hear a Mozart horn concerto without thinking of Murphy Tedley.
Do I need a microphone? No. No. <laughs> Good. I want to thank uh, John, Janet, Prop Skip, Van, the university, the university, for this uh, honor. Uh, today, I hope, is going to be a celebration and not a eulogy. We come together to honor and celebrate our great musical tradition here at Central Methodist University. Tradition that includes a great trumpet player, band director, mentor, musicologist, recruiter, jazz man, friend, and professor here at Central from 1967 to 1972, Paul A. Montemurro. We're here to lift up the Paul A. Montemurro Award. And thanks to all who have contributed. How many here in this room today played at Central under the baton of Professor Paul A. Montemurro? There's a few souls left. <laughs> all right, that's good. I took some information off of the website. We have websites now. They didn't have websites when we were here, did they? I didn't think so. Uh, I'm going to go through this list with you. This is on the website today under Fine Arts, and I'd like for you all to be engaged with me. Uh, if you know who is responsible for getting the band director is responsible for getting this person here, I'd like you to holler it out. You tell me. Guest conductors and soloists that have appeared with the CMU band include Clark Terry. I'm here. Don Menza. Anybody? Thank you. Eugene Rousseau. Uh, John Woody. Mike Vax. Paul Burley. We know this one. Merle Evans. It's okay to say it. Say it. How about Kenneth Slater? Claude Smith. Robert Hornyak. Nobody. <laughs> Warren Covington. Madam Your Honor. Vaclav Nellybell. Madam Your Honor. Seward got Nellybell here. Why didn't I know that? I have something. I came prepared with all kinds of toys. <laughs> The next one on here is Irby Green. Nobody? Montemiro. 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 Here's the tape. This is called a cassette tape. <laughs> it actually was taken from a reel-to-reel -reel tape. Some reel. Go look it up on <laughs> This also has the 70, 71, and 74 Find You Alpha Contemporary shows on it. Who from the university would like to digitize this for us? Come on, one of you guys. Let's go. There's some more on here that are everybody that's been here. The, the last one on the list is David Holsinger. Has anybody ever heard of him? No. <laughs> Does anybody know this, this gentleman? Yes. David Tingabout. It's right there. <laughs> one of three or four students that's been here that paid attention in theory. <laughs>
for sure. We also played an Nelly, Nelly Bell piece. It was Saturday morning, 8 o'clock. No band directors ever get up Saturday morning at 8 o'clock at MMEA, right? Am I making this up? The place was packed. What, what, it was packed. It was great, too. It was a great concert. I think the greatest moment in our tenure here was the, the honor of playing MEC in Albuquerque, New Mexico, in spring of 1971. That was my senior year. That was a dual conference of both Central and Southwest Divisions, so it was very well attended. We played Morton Google's Santa Fe Saga. The clarinet section uh, had Monteo clarinets. Does anybody play clarinet during the team? Monteo clarinets. You don't remember? How did we get those? I think, Mon I think Prof just knew the Selma rep or something, and we're like playing these things. Four million dollar clarinets all of a sudden. Well, he just, he just, you know, I never could figure out some of the things he managed to do for us. They just magically appeared. And you know he had to be doing something in the background. But we never knew what he was doing, so he just did it. Uh, if you want to hear our leadership, or his leadership, that is, Prof. Connor Merrill's, there's four records to that we've gotten from our era. And you can gladly listen to those. And you'll tell if he was a good band director or not. Because they're right on there. Suit yourself. <laughs> um, I got just about three stories to tell, and I'm pretty much done. Uh, it's a perfect day to tell this one. In 67, and before, I don't know how long before, some of you guys have been around a while. About the second week of school, they come up there to McMurray and they grab all the freshmen and they run you right down here. Right outside those windows, in the third story windows, you'd pray for rain, right? And then the ladies up there would dump buckets of water on you. Anybody been through this situation? Okay. They still do this, right? Are they still, are they still doing this? Where you pray for rain and you're fresh water? They're not. Let's go get it started again. Sorry I brought it up. Um, I was talking to Prof one day about that ceremony. And he said, yeah, when I came in here, I'd been the Korean War, and I'd been playing an army band, and I'd been this. And he, he came here a little bit older than most freshmen. They came into McMurray to get him out. He didn't go. <laughs> he didn't pray for rain. He got out of it. One time, uh, we went to your house for spaghetti. There was always spaghetti at your old house. And Dave Wendelton was my roommate, and we were good friends. We went to your house for spaghetti, and I, I hope you're not offended by the story. <coughs> but we pulled up there, and right outside your house was a lawnmower. And the lawnmower was the first electric lawnmower I've ever seen. But it's not like you have today, you know, where you recharge the battery. This had a cord on it that went 100 feet. And Wendell and I got out of there and we just started cracking up. Every two feet was sliced. <laughs> <laughs> was that you or him? You could say him. <laughs> he couldn't, he couldn't do it. The other one, those of us that had for private lessons, he, he got this really cool little device called the Visualizer. Remember the Visualizer? It was one end was like a baritone mouthpiece, and the other one was a trumpet mouthpiece with a you know piece of metal between it. And he'd sit there and hold it in his mouth so he could see what was going on in here. I mean, it was just open, and you could visualize what was going on. He said, "Tell him I'll show you this." So I'm going to my private list. I'm going to show this to you. Watch this. He he goes like that, and I got spit all the time. <laughs> I'm like, Prof, that's really cool. I like that. He managed to use the thing on One more story. I think it was 2000. Pointer and I talked him into going to MME. I think it was his last time. And he brought his trumpet. Uh, Pointer brought his trumpet. Sam White was down there. He used to play saxophone for Prof. And he was actually teaching down the lake, so he brought a trap set and a keyboard, and we had us a condo, and we decided to jam. 
because that's what you do, right? So there's no drummer. And there's not that many jazz French horn players. <laughs> so guess who got stuck playing trap set drums? So we're sitting there doing, I don't know what, we're just playing jazz, right? Sure enough, right in the middle of this thing, Mon Romero goes, Teddy, get going, you're getting behind. <laughs> this is in 2000, people. This is in 2000. I stopped, because I was a little older. And I said, Prof, A, I'm a French horn player. B, I don't even play drums. <laughs> gave me that Italian smirk. <laughs> you know the Italian smirk? He gave that to me. It was kind of, I can't replicate it, sorry. He's the only one that could do it. He was okay, we laughed, and off we went. This is a great day for us. When I say us, I mean all of us. We have something special here. Prof knew it was special because he was a student here under Tom Birch. He brought us the best of what we are. He kept the tradition alive. It is good and appropriate that we honor him in this way. And now I'll turn over to Skip. Thank you. Mr. Cherry asked if the band would play a march. And I said we don't do marches at this school. <laughs> Um, it actually, the big problem is which march. Uh, so I found a really good march. Uh, it happens to be arranged by a young man by the name of Andrew Blow. Um, this is a march by, uh, in, by everyone will recognize, called the Billboard, arranged by Andy Glow. And there's the Andrew Glow right back there. Yeah. This may be loud. Good. <laughs>
uh, do a commercial. We have to have a commercial, right? Lyle Moore is showing Flyboys tonight. It's a first-rate feature film produced by a central band jock. Can you imagine anything like that? Yes. Lyle did it. His son did the music. It's going to be appearing in Stedman Hall, and we want to invite all of you to go. It's only $5, and every penny goes towards the Montemarole Fund. So it would be a great donation. Okay, now that being said, just to give you a little bit of a hint, we've already had one person pay $100 for a ticket, so do your best. <laughs> Card said that I need to tell you was at seven o'clock. Thank you very much for the card. <laughs> Has anyone ever heard of Facebook? <laughs> well, this old man, he found out about it, and just like the rest of you, started typing in names, friends. A lot of central people thought of my world. Hadn't seen Prof in years and years. I typed him in there, and there was a, a page there called the official Paul Montemarole fan club page. I was amazed. And so I go to the page, and it was such a thrilling thing for me. It really was to see so many different pictures and stuff. But you guys have got, I got shocked because there was a picture of, of Prof. Monroe there, and he wasn't just getting older, he was very ill. And of course, I, I had many regrets, you know, I hadn't kept up the relationship. And I thought, well, what have we ever done for Paul Monroe? Well, most of you know that. We, we just kind of let Facebook take over, and we kind of got the word out there to all the graduates that we had found. They all started going to that fan, fan club page, and looking it over, and more and more people became moved by what they were seeing. Well, thanks to the care and, and love of Stephanie Mullins and, and Don Merle here at Central Methodist University, I came to them with the idea of let's do an award in his name and make it into a scholarship. And, and at first it was kind of, well, you know, stupid bill they didn't say <laughs> and so it took off it really did and, and, and people liked the idea we got organized Alan Mitchell from Central was kind enough to give me a list of uh, all of the people who had played in Prof's band at least as close to what we could find so then we left Facebook we started doing the email thing I got phone numbers and I started calling people and it was a, a really wonderful experience to visit with people from all over the country whom I had not visited with in years and years. And we shared stories, tears of joy of all the, the experiences we had that had suddenly become so valued over the years. Uh, I want to share, share one real quick one. Uh, Melanie Chipwood, some of you probably don't remember Melanie. She played horn and Murphy was nice and was polite to her most of the time. <laughs> but she fell in love with a trumpet player and he got drafted and uh, they got married and moved away. She only spent, I believe, one year with us. And Melody said, you know, John, she said, I've played in four other university bands. Now you remember that he was in the service moving around and she was following. He said, there was never, ever a band anywhere like playing in the Central Methodist College game. And that's a true story. As the phone, club, phone calls were being made, the, the, the dollars started coming in, and the dollars turned into thousands of dollars, and, and it just got to be, it took on a life of its own because of the energy from all of you people and all the wonderful spirits that you guys are. One of my phone calls was to a lady named Janet Jacobs. And Janet shared stories, uh, wonderful reminiscences. She went to the high school band and got to see Prof as a college director witnessed by a high school student. So she had a, a wide variety of experiences to share. She said she'd be glad to send a contribution. She did that. Soon after that, she called me. And she said, John, our family is, has made a donation that we're going to use to name the entire third floor for Paul Montemurro. Yeah. Get her? Yeah, Janet, why don't you come up and say a few words on behalf of your family? That was a wonderful gesture on the path, on the behalf of Prop Montemurro. Thank you, thank you, John, and 
we must all thank John again today for everything that he's done because uh, uh, without the motivation that he provided for everybody and the help of all the people at Central, um, this wouldn't have gotten done today. But I feel like the, the Gary Cooper in Pride of the Yankees, the speech, you know, where I'm the luckiest guy in the world today because um, luck or fate or karma or whatever you want to call it enabled our family and friends to be a part of Paul A. Montemurro's musical life both at Central and at Oklahoma State. As well as knowing Prof and Linda and the little Montemurro girls here in Fayette, we also know him through the bands he put on the street and on the football field, the jazz band and the concert band. We also know him through his Central legacy and how he continued that legacy through student teachers who sent to us at Fayette High School, such as Mike Winger, Murph Tedley, Pat Nimitz, and Marsha Perry. So that's how several of us Fayette townies, whose formative years had been steeped in the tradition of central bands, followed Prof to Stillwater to help him begin another tradition of fine bands there. We had the best of both worlds because he related to us in a different way. We also felt special because the central tradition followed us in many ways. For instance, one of the OSU voice professors was a woman named Marion Abbott. She was a central graduate from uh, the mid-50s. And when Prof introduced her to us and told her we were from Fayette, she drew herself up, she was about this tall, she drew herself up and said, I was in Dean Luther T. Spade's a cappella choir, and I was beautiful savior. <laughs> and we knew that she was the contralto soloist uh, in, in Beautiful Savior for her choir years here, here in Fayette. When Prof was grooming us for student recitals, he insisted that everyone properly, properly acknowledge the applause and taught us how to bow. And only those of us from Fayette completely appreciated his example from his own college years when his piano teacher had coached him saying, you must bow, Paul Anthony. That piano teacher was Miss Opal Louise Hayes. Of course, Prof brought his particular band, brand of directing and musicianship to Stillwater. Not that us Missouri kids were so sophisticated, but most of those Oklahoma State band kids had never met anyone quite like Prof. <laughs> With his stories of his high school band marching down Michigan Avenue playing the Chicago Tribune March. There were about 170 of us in marching band, and in particularly complicated rehearsals, Prof would cut us off, you know, like, like he did, and peer out into the confusion and yell, what? You all out there playing ring -a -E And I guarantee you and no, that nobody in Oklahoma knew what ring -a -E was, but we soon found out what it wasn't. <laughs> the Monroe family opened their home to us and our parents and brothers and sisters who came from Fayette in droves for football weekends and marching band performances. My brother Jay was four years old, and some of his earliest memories of the football games and the excitement of seeing us in the band, as well as pizza from Shakey's at the Montemarro's house. So when the opportunity arose to honor Prof in the Central Band tradition, by dedicating the third floor in his honor, it was a privilege for the Jacobs family to do so. We can never repay fully someone like Prof, Paul A. Montemarro, who is still so much a part of our lives. Every day, some gesture, some teaching technique, some saying comes out of our mouths that we can directly relate to our parents, our teachers, and our band directors. Prof's legacy and the legacy of all of them will resonate through this building and will continue to educate and inspire as long as we tell the stories one more time. We take it from the dogfight one more time. We play the last eight bars one more time. And we say thank you, Prof, one more time. Thank you. It is said that it's easier for a father to have children than for children to have a real father. After the discovery of Prof's fan club page and the many post-Prof CMU student alumni, we started getting to know Paul's daughter, Paula Montemurro Linden. After reading Paula's post and responses to our post, I knew that Paula possessed many of the fine qualities of her father. To make this simple, on some very deep level, 
Paul's outstanding qualities make it even more important for us to honor him. When you get to know Paula, when you get to know the entire Montemoro family, the Linden family, you will admire them as much as we have come to admire them. Let me introduce Paula on the behalf of the family to introduce them to you. Paula Montemoro Linden.
course, this momentous occasion, we can't even estimate the power that this building is going to have on the music program, the band program, the choir program. This just absolutely caps it all off. Thank you, Central Methodist University. Thank you, Mary Ann Inman. Thank you, Board of Trustees. Thanks to everybody for doing this for, gotta say it, our band. You bet. All right. Really, the sad occasion was the passing of, of Paul. And so, let's bow our heads in prayer one more time, please. Lord, we give thanks for this man who brought us so much depth and so much meaning. We give thanks for his everlasting energy, his immense musical talents, his unbridled enthusiasm, and his innate, loving, and vastly intuitive teaching nature. We give thanks, Lord, that even in his passing, he has brought us successfully together. We pray, Lord, that he will continue to live in our hearts during the remaining time that we have here on this earth. And yes, Lord, we pray that you will wrap your loving arms around his wonderful family and give them peace and comfort during this time of great loss. Amen. Amen. So, let's look back just real quickly. Under Monroe Merle, the pursuit of excellence started when he raised his baton on the first day and did not end until the last note of the recessional at graduation. Every rehearsal of every ensemble was indeed a battle for perfection. This high level of expectation created frustration, conflict, and ultimately exciting and moving performances. But interspersed in this never-ending intensity were deep, deep levels of caring. Caring for music, caring for his band kids, and caring for Central Methodist. He cared that someday we would be happy and even proud to make the claim that we were from this beloved campus and we played together. And also, Paul Montemurro had us traveling Allegro con Fiocco as we performed our musical passage through the great symphony we call Central Methodist. Under his direction, there were few allegrettos. Yes, there was a moderato, but it was in the cry your eyes out movement called the Mass from La Fiesta Mexicana, and the dramatic phrases of Santa Fe Saga complete with musical sounds, emulating cracking whips and torrid wailing mules. We learned that the pursuit of excellence travels over a road with sharp turns, jagged rocks, and cliffs on both sides. We learned to never pass up the opportunity to rehearse. We learned to settle for nothing but the very best in performance. In short, we were uncompromising radicals. And he turned us loose on the public school systems. <laughs> to know that really what was happening was that Montemurro was building our character. He gave our lives purpose and direction. He taught us commitment to a cause bigger than ourselves and made it compulsory to pass it along. Did I say pass it along? Hmm. Bear with me. Famous historical novelist David McCullough said this concerning the self-made man. There's no such thing. We're all the products of teachers, parents, <laughs> friends, rivals that have shaped us along the way. And so let it be said that our beloved Paul Montemurro was a product of those who loved and nourished him along his way. Let us forever remember that his passing must be an inspiration to continue to carry on his legacy at every opportunity we must give to others generously as his mentors gave to him. Through these efforts, those who we influence will pass it along to succeeding generations. 
Paul Monroe's legacy then will live on. So now, let's symbolically, <clears throat> let us right now symbolically pass along Monroe's baton, even if he had lost it, which he often did. <laughs> we, in, well, indeed you say, yes, to a large extent, this has already taken place. We who played under his baton are, after all, not puppies. Some of us may say that we're old, gray dogs. But Monroe would have had it, not heard of it that way. It would not have happened. He'd say, here's how he used to say this, Tetley, Wendelton, get in the car, we're going recruiting. But he now would be recruiting for a new generation. Albert Schweitzer said, in everyone's life, at some time, the inner fire goes out. It is then burst into flames by an encounter with another human being, and let me please add another new generation. And by the way, we have sitting right here before us, what a coincidence, a new generation. We have this generation sitting here before us, embers bursting into flame. Didn't you not even see that flame burst in the midst of a rainstorm? <laughs> right here at Central Methodist College today. These young musicians are the new Paul Montemuro. Sitting right here in our presence is the inspiration for tomorrow and thus the creation of this special award. Now, are there any former drum majors in the group? Raise your hands up. Okay, here we got two, three, good, good for you guys. Okay, drum majors. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm sorry. Rubber <laughs> revision, it's not good. Excellent. Drum majors, we're going to tell this band now to stand on its feet. Get them up, drum majors, right now. Stand up, band. We're talking to you now. Get up. There you go. <laughs> So now, Central Methodist University band members, we want to symbolically hand you this baton. Do you want to take it? It won't be easy. The pay is not the best. The road will be cluttered with unmotivated people in the way, politics in the way, mediocrity in the way. You want it? If you are brave, if music means more than money, and if you want to live to change lives, take this baton and use it to inspire. Take this baton and fan some dying ember of a life into a roaring flame. Take this baton and find a group of kids that look more like puffs of smoke blowing aimlessly around some high school campus and change them into musical giants. Paul A. Montemurro would have had it no other way. His way, the central way, is charging forward to take students and turn them into smoldering embers into a magnificent marching marathon of excellence, a swift kicks and hot legs jazz band, and a concert band contributing constantly to musical growth. He would settle for nothing else but a roaring fire, ignoring boundaries, and limits placed on him by people and institutions. And what for? So that excellence can be achieved, and character can be built, and hearts will leap and soar, the spirits will take off. Long live Paul Montemurro now that he resides in your hearts and inside the people to whom you will inspire and whose character you will build. In turn, you will pass along his baton to the next generation. This spring, the baton will be officially passed to a young individual playing passionately in this very band, displaying his attributes of musicianship, unbridled enthusiasm, and a take-no-prisoners attitude. That name will appear on this beautiful plaque, made possible with generous donations of his former students. And now, Ladies and gentlemen, 
We are pleased and proud to present. <laughs> Ceremony, all we want now is your money. You may leave. <laughs>